So thank you for joining us this evening to learn more about our Masters of Science in Sports Science and Rehabilitation program. We have with us this evening, Dr. Brittany Ramirez. Dr. Brittany Ramirez is originally from North Carolina and received her bachelor's in athletic training from High Point University. Following graduation, she gained experiences for several years as an athletic trainer in the professional and collegiate athletic settings, and then in a clinical role in private practice where she was introduced to the chiropractic profession. She then enrolled at Logan University, graduating with her doctorate of chiropractic in December of 2015. Following her graduation from Logan, Dr. Ramirez returned to the athletic setting as a certified athletic trainer at the University of Missouri and opened her private practice, Columbia Chiropractic Group. She joined the University of Missouri sports medicine team in 2016 as a team chiropractor alongside her husband, Dr. Jose Ramirez. She then returned to Logan as the Assistant Director of Human Performance at the University of Missouri, training interns from the DC program. Dr. Ramirez earned her Certified Chiropractic Sports Physician Certification and graduated with her Master's of Sports Science and Rehabilitation from this very program in 2018. Dr. Ramirez's passion and expertise has always been in sports medicine and advancing the opportunities for young professionals in the field. She is looking forward to expanding the MSSR program's footprint nationally, establishing exciting new internship opportunities, and maintaining the quality education which Logan University provides. So without further ado, Dr. Ramirez. Hi, thank you so very much, and thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Um, it's very exciting. I'm excited to get to talk about our program with you and answer any questions that you have. Um, I know we've got a great mix of individuals that are here from different backgrounds, so this is very exciting. Um, to tell you a little bit about our master's program, um, it is completely online in an asynchronous format. So this means that you can complete your coursework at any point of the day, right? You don't have to log in at a specific time for class to attend um, a class session of someone presenting. So this allows for a lot of freedom for individuals who are currently working or even concurrently juggling other commitments or, or if you have a family, right? Um, I, I myself completed this program several years ago while working two jobs. My husband completed this program as well while he was still um, running a practice too. So we do allow some flexibility in this program, um, depending on what your interests are when you schedule your courses, right? For several electives um, and a flexibility of which classes you take somewhat in, um, in what order, right? So you have the flexibility to work around your daily schedule, but still you're going to obtain that high quality educational experience that we have. So this program, it is great for anyone with a background in exercise science, sports nutrition, strength and conditioning, personal training, um, exercise physiology, athletic training, or even physical therapy, to name a few. Right? There's a lot of different individuals with backgrounds that take this program and go through this master's program and are very successful in completing their career goals. So following successful completion of the master's in science of the sports science and rehabilitation degree, these individuals are prepared to sit for several certifications, which you can use to further your career, right? A few of those are the CSCS, which is the certified strength and conditioning specialist, the NSCA certified personal trainer certification, the tactical strength and conditioning facilitators, the ACSM Certified Exercise Physiologist, and the Certified Special Population Specialist. So you have a wide variety of certifications that you can sit for, and our education here helps you to prepare to sit for those exams. So this is also an incredible opportunity for any of those students that are enrolled in the Doctorate of Chiropractic program. So you can enroll during trimester five and begin taking your online courses to complete the master's degree concurrently with your DC degree. So the advantage to this is that you're able to graduate from the master's and doctorate program at the same time, and then you can sit for the certified chiropractic sports physician um, exam. So this exam 
pretty much proves that the physician has a specialization in the sports chiropractic field and is the first step to completing the diplomate for um, the American Chiropractic Board of Sports Physicians or to sit for the International Certified Chiropractic Sports Physician exam. So lots of different opportunities that you can take from this master's program. Right, and the last and most exciting part for me, at least in, of this course, is going to be your internship. Right, so at the end of this program, the last course that you take is the internship requirement. So I am extremely excited about this because the students get to choose your location. So it's whatever fits where you're at, um, your personal and professional interests, and you get to gain really valuable experience out in the field. So we have students that have interned in the collegiate athletic setting, professional athletic setting, um, maybe with the strength and conditioning coaches, the athletic performance team, the athletic training staff. And then we have students who are gaining experience in physical therapy clinics or cardiopulmonary rehab units, um, the exercise physiology labs, private gyms, CrossFit gyms, um, and other medical offices such as chiropractic offices. So those, for those chiropractic students who decide that they want to jump in and take this at the same time, some of them are able to complete their internship at the same location of their preceptorship, depending on what is available um, in the setting for that opportunity. So with my strength of having more of a background in the collegiate and professional athletic sports medicine setting, that's allowed me to really reach out and work with some well-known names in the sports medicine setting um, to begin establishing some of those additional internship opportunities. We all know COVID kind of put a, a kink into things for all of us and opportunities, but I'm really excited to watch these partnerships grow, expand over the next year, and really allow the students premier access to the facilities and the top clinicians and coaches in the country that you get to learn from. So this is a really exciting part of um, what I think is probably the most fun part of the entire master's degree because you do get to have that hands-on applied component, right? Um, and then yes, as Zach said, we are able to um, in the next few days use a referral code to waive your application fee, which is exciting. Um, we do have them here from admissions to answer any questions that you have on that front. Um, but some of the benefits that we really see from this master's program is it's just another step in specializing in anything in the sports and fitness, um, physical therapy, athletic training world, right? So we have students that are young and still, in, you know, right after their bachelor's that they're enrolled. And then we have individuals that are in their 30s and 40s that are enrolling in this. So it's never too late to get started with this master's degree. And you do have a lot of flexibility to take this at any point in time in your life and, you know, any part of your career. Oh, I don't know, Zach, do you have anything that you'd like to add as well? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I, I think for, um, you know, obviously with, with your background um, working in the athletic field and, um, and especially with your chiropractic background, we do have quite a few chiropractic students interested in going through this and kind of adding on to practice um, what they would already be, you know, kind of doing in the chiropractic field. This obviously, like you said, just is, an, is another step in that direction if you're wanting to do more work with athletes. For somebody coming, you know, maybe from a, a non-chiropractic background, what are some of the you know, kind of entry level jobs that somebody in that in that field might be looking for, um, you know, whether it, and I know the word rehabilitation is in the title of a degree, but, um, you know, I know for, for some students that it really helps to clarify, you know, what, what some of the things are that you'll be able to do once, you know, you complete the program and get that internship completed and that sort of stuff. So. Absolutely. Great question. And part of the rehab stuff, it's interesting. I have um, one student actually who was going through this and using their internship opportunity to get the hours necessary to apply to physical therapy school. So that's one of the exciting parts of PT. You can kind of almost double dip, if you will, and get a better experience and background for prerequisites for another um, higher program, a doctorate program. Um, with, from the chiropractic standpoint, um, graduating with this, it does give you a leg up if you wanna work in any type of athletic setting. So maybe that's working with a collegiate or professional sports team. Right. It could even just be working with the high school team that's down the road, but you have that background and that extra leg up on sports injuries, on sports rehab. So how to how to work as a team to improve an athlete's performance or to get them back from an injury faster, um, especially with the chiropractic students, you're not always going to see injuries that have to deal with the spine. 
So this is an exciting opportunity to, to increase your knowledge as well on extremities and overall, um, you know, cardio, respiratory, pulmonary, um, exercise prescription. So writing those exercise um, rehabilitation protocols to help these individuals recover overall. Right, so it gives you just a little bit of a leg up. Um, for instance, we have a, a dear, we meaning my husband and I have um, another university that their chiropractor called us and said, hey, who do you have that you know that's gone through these programs? There's a smaller university looking for someone and we want to we want to hire them, but we need to know who to look at. So that's an exciting opportunity. So for, for those who aren't in the DC program, you can look at working in um, with some of the certifications that you can get afterwards to do personal training, right? That's a big, that's a big thing that we see a lot. Individuals that want to help working in a private practice or even in a gym setting, the strength and conditioning um, side is also a really big one. This allows you, and we are um, a, a partner program from the National Strength and Condition Conditioning Association. Again, you get that education you need to sit for that CSCS exam which gives you an opportunity to work on a strength and conditioning setting. So we have students that have gone on to work in college um, and professional athletics from that standpoint. Also gives you an opportunity to work in a clinical setting. Maybe you wanna work alongside um, physicians doing some of their um, cardiopulmonary rehabilitation or as a um, physical therapy assistant. So this is, gives you a great background for that. That, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for, for giving a little more insight on that. Um, and then and then the other thing, you know, kind of going back to the internships that you just talked about, um, you know, I know there are especially in more of an online program like this, um, it's obviously a really cool opportunity to get some of that hands on experience, um, not only for um, you know, the actual experience of getting that hands-on work with athletes and people who are, you know, more physically active like that, but also just the network component. Can you talk a little bit more, more about the importance of not just getting hours in, but also meeting people and kind of getting your name out in the, in the, this community a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, I always say in the athletics world is a tight bubble. It's who you know, <laughs> right? You can have a great resume and still have a hard time getting your foot in the door with places because it is a small world, if you will. For instance, um, you know, I talk regularly with people in sports medicine settings uh, in uh, several different Power Five conference universities and their sports medicine groups. And, and it is, if I know somebody that has an affiliation or had worked with their, their school. For instance, I had someone out in California that I called them to yesterday to ask about a reference for someone because I knew that they had attended a program there at their university in their sports medicine department. So it, the networking part of it is, is unbelievable. You get, again, that experience of working with an individual who specializes in that field, but now they're gonna open doors all over the US for who they know as well. And then you also will have that interest of attending certain conferences, right? Attending things like maybe the NFL Combine or the National Strength and Conditioning Association, um, their yearly annual conference. Um, so again, as a student, you get discount rates at joining some of those groups that you're interested in, which is great. Um, I love being able to say when I was going through my program, I was like, I'm a 30 year old student, it's fine. I can still get the discount um, because you are a student <laughs> and then be able to attend some of these conferences even um, cheaper than you would as if you register as a professional, especially now with everything being virtual, um, you have an even easier opportunity. And, and again, a lot of things are free right now for continuing education and conferences to attend in those specializations, again, just to get your name out and work with other individuals. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, obviously the, the internship, you know, as you said, is probably the, the coolest part of this program because you get to actually go out and start start doing things in the field. And like, you know, like you just talked about, meet people and network a little bit more. Um, you know, apart from that, what are some of the things that, um, you know, maybe set Logan apart from another program? You know, that there are not a lot of programs out there titled sports science and rehabilitation. You know, it's a lot more exercise physiology or kinesiology or those types of things. So what are some of the things, um, you know, whether it's the curriculum or faculty or some of the things that you think are, you know, factors that may set Logan apart from some of the other options out there? Why should somebody choose Logan? Absolutely. Logan is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I can talk all day long about why these are phenomenal programs as <laughs> I've gone through them myself and, and still been affiliated with this university for, you know, eight years now. Um, 
the faculty are phenomenal. They come in different specializations and backgrounds. We have several that are athletic trainers. So they've been in the sports medicine setting as well. We have several that have been their CSCS, so they're coming from a strength and conditioning background, um, kinesiology backgrounds, right? So they're always staying. What I love about our faculty is they're so diverse and they're so very much into um, a lot of the evidence-based um, research that's coming out. So I, I get a little bit from each of them, right? So I know who to go to if I want to learn what's going on in uh, cardiopulmonary side of things, or if I want to go look at more at at the rehab side of things or emergency procedures and care, concussion protocols. So we have a great diverse group of really dedicated faculty that make this program special. Um, apart with that, you get a lot of the elective choices from this um, program. So with the DC students, if you're going to sit for that, um, the CCSP exam, we do have a hands-on emergency care lab that you have to take to sit um, for that exam, but that's gonna give you, again, that's the only one that is not online completely. You come in for a weekend and we teach you a lot of the hands-on, so the spine boarding, right? How to take care of an emergency procedure, how to check someone's airway. So you get to learn a lot of those hands-on skills that again, you may end up using if you're the sideline physician, right? At a, anything from an AAU track meet to uh, an NFL game. You never know when an emergency is going to happen. Um, you also get a great um, mix of, in your education of exercise physiology, emergency care, upper extremity rehabilitation, lower extremity rehabilitation. So if you have a background with a strength in one or the other, you can actually branch out and take a different class. So coming into this as an athletic trainer, I had a lot of experience in sports and emergency care and rehabilitation, but maybe not so much with the special populations. So that's a course that you're able to take to get to improve your knowledge as an elective course in a different area that you're maybe you're not as comfortable or familiar with. Sure. And kind of going along with that, um, you know, obviously you're the program director now, so that's that's exciting. But um, kind of putting on your your, your student hat, um, since you actually went through this program yourself, could you talk a little bit about the, you know, the, the benefits of, you know, having that flexibility and, um, you know, obviously you just mentioned the different elective options, but just in, in terms of day to day life, you know, the, the flexibility of online and just how Logan fit into your schedule with that. Absolutely. I took my um, master's. I did not do that while I was finishing my DC degree. Actually, I started that after almost a year after I had graduated and I was actually in the process of opening my own private practice. So I was building my private practice, which took a lot of time. I'm um, trying to you know, get new patients, trying to set up everything from marketing to um, a phone system and internet. <laughs> so it was great to have that flexibility where maybe in between patients on the slower days when I was just getting started, I could jump in and finish a quick assignment or at the end of the night when I got home and I could dedicate time after dinner to sit the flexibility or 2 a.m. If I woke up at 2 a.m. in the morning and wanted to get on it and read something or, or complete an assignment, I had that flexibility, which was awesome. Um, we do, again, everything's built out in these courses. So you get what you, you have deadlines throughout the week, but you have several days to complete them. So it's not like, hey, you log in on Monday morning, you gotta have all this turned in by Monday evening and then a whole new set of information logged in on Tuesday. Um, I finished the program in under two years, a little over a year actually. So I, I really combined and, and took a few more credits. I had to have permission <laughs> from the program director <laughs> at that time because I wanted to get it done a little faster um, and took a, a full-time load uh, one semester and it was it was a lot easier to manage than I thought it would be because I had that flexibility. That's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, obviously glad that that worked out for you, but <laughs> yeah. and, then, uh, and then the faculty is great too because you can contact them via email or phone anytime and and they were really responsive as well. So you weren't waiting five days to get a response back about an assignment or a question that you had. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think for all the all the prospective students that are in here, that that's one of my favorite things about Logan, um, you know, working in the admissions office is I know that our students are very well managed. Um, once once you're here, we have um, obviously admissions will take good care of you leading up to the program. Um, and you can see Dr. Ramirez and the faculty are all fantastic. But we also have um, academic success coaches who are there to um, kind of help you plan out your schedule every trimester while you're going through that program. Um, registration is much different 
for um, at Logan specifically. Um, it's not a mad rush to try and get into the classes that you want. Um, we really do every, everything we can to make sure that you're getting enrolled in the classes that are actually gonna benefit you the most. Um, and, and you really do have multiple points of contact um, while you're going through the program to make sure that you're succeeding in your classes. If you're ever having issues, you can reach out to, um, you know, even, even though admissions isn't working with you very frequently, we're still happy to talk with you while you're in the program about that sort of stuff. And your success coach is going to be a, a really great resource for you while you're going through those classes too. So um, I do see that we have a couple of questions here. So I'm going to go ahead and get those answered. Um, as a reminder, anybody that is in here, if you do have questions, feel free to type those in the, in the Zoom chat um, or just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask those questions. We can always answer it that way too, whatever works easiest for you guys. So um, a couple of questions here related specifically to the DC program, it looks like. Um, in terms of when you can apply as a chiropractic student, um, we just need to make sure that your bachelor's degree is completed. I know some DC students have their bachelor's when they start the DC program. That's great. Um, some students finish that over your first few trimesters. So that's just the one thing that we'll need to double check on that. Um, most chiropractic students at Logan apply in trimester four. Um, we do have some that apply sooner than that. And we also have some that start after trimester five too. So if you're really wanting to focus on the DC program and start the master's degree a little bit later, maybe when you get into clinic or closer to graduation, that's completely fine as well. Um, we're pretty flexible with that. Um, but most students, if you're wanting to start in trimester five, most students are going to apply sometime during trimester four. Um, let's see, we have something else here related to the internship. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ramirez, I don't know if you want to handle that one. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so the question is for the chiropractic students. They are completing preceptorships, meaning they're out in the field working in individuals' offices all over the world. And I literally say all over the world because a friend of mine was in Australia, right? So we have, you can go to clinics anywhere. You sure. will have the internship requirement as well. Some um, offices, we can have you do them at the same, but the hours count separately. Right, so it breaks down to a little over 10 hours a week for the internship requirement. Again, meaning you can go on weekends, evenings. So again, if you're handling a job, I was working a full-time job and I would spend my weekends and evenings and early mornings working um, in a sports medicine setting um, with an athletic trainer. So you can take them as long as they're, we keep them those hours separate. Um, you also are not allowed to, if you have a, a previous license or certification, so for instance, as a, as a DC student, you're not allowed to adjust as part of that internship. You need to be doing other things, which is all laid out in our handbook and we go through. Um, luckily, I teach that course, so you would work directly with me and we would find a way to make sure that it fit or if we needed to establish at a different location, right? So maybe you're doing more you know, in the afternoons, you're only focusing on working in the rehabilitation side of things with patients and taking them through rehab exercises and strengthening, um, or maybe even some conditioning exercises as well. And then instead of doing the evaluation and adjusting component that you would um, under the DC side. So we can absolutely juggle those. It makes it easier at times and maybe tougher at times, right? Because you've got to wear both hats in separate settings. Um, but then again, we have students that do that and then they separate and do it at other um, locations as well. Perfect. Thank you for, uh, for giving a little more information on that. Yeah. Um, and then CJ, your other question here um, about the schedule breakdown for students going through the DC degree concurrently. Um, for the majority of our DC students, especially if you're starting in trimester five, uh, more often than not, it's just going to be one, maybe two classes, um, at least at the start to kind of get your feet wet, see how that goes for you. And then some students, when you get into the clinic, um, upper trimesters, when you're focused primarily on the clinic, uh, a lot of students will pick up an extra course, you know, at that point, possibly when you're not actually in the classroom as much. Um, but again, we're a little bit flexible on that. Um, maybe Dr. Ramirez can give a little more insight on, on the scheduling as well, but typically, especially for our chiropractic students, we understand that that's your priority while you're there. We want to make sure you're successful in that program first and foremost, um, and we definitely don't want you to get overwhelmed with multiple programs and taking a full full course load online as well. It can get a little bit, um, a little bit much, um, especially right at the start of the program. So um, typically students are going to take, you know, one or two classes, maybe three, um, just kind of depending how your schedule, the, the rest of your schedule shakes out. But. Yeah, and that is where, as you said earlier, your academic success coaches are really wonderful in helping you navigate that. Um, and, and usually if there is an issue, it comes down to the program directors, uh, us meeting and, and working alongside each other to say, yes, you know, we can approve maybe to take one extra course because we look at the academic success because we don't want to, we don't want to put too much on you. I, I know how, how rigorous the 
DC program is, especially certain trimesters are, are a little tougher than others maybe, um, or you're more in class or more in a lab setting for that trimester. So we try to balance that really well and your academic success coach and, and Stacia is a, is a godsend in this program of helping us to manage that. So, um, and then if you don't mind, Zach, I'll just jump to the next question here. Sure. Um, if coming on to travel to um, the, to the states or to Missouri, the only time you have to travel here is if you are taking the emergency procedures lab. So that would be for any of the chiropractic students who want to take that CCSP exam, you have to have that lab. That is one weekend in one trimester and we give you those dates before the trimester starts. So um, this trimester hasn't even ended and we've already planned out the one for the spring. So we have those dates um, one trimester ahead of time usually so that we can give that to you. Your internship can be completed anywhere. So if you are, um, let's say you're in New York, you can complete that anywhere in New York Work, or you can travel to California to do it if you'd like, but you don't physically have to be here in Missouri for anything other than the one lab weekend if you take that class. So you can go through the program and take other courses instead as your electives and never have to worry about that part. Yeah, and we, we actually do have um, a decent amount of international students now. So um, multiple in Canada. Um, we also have some in um, kind of Central America and then a few across the ocean too. So um, definitely definitely something we're familiar with. Um, so yeah, we have plenty of students who never come to the campus, um, but yeah, like Dr. Ramirez just said, that, that one course, if you're wanting to take that elective, that's the only time you would need to be here. So, and you um, absolutely can take that course without being in the DC program. It's just the only one that is required for the DC students who want to get that exam. They can't sit for that exam without that lab. So mostly it is chiropractic students that are in there, but not completely. So that's, and it's an awesome course, because again, it's hands-on. Um, I, en I enjoyed it. Even as an athletic trainer, I didn't have to sit for that, uh, take that class to sit for the exam because I had a, I was a certified athletic trainer. So that is the one caveat. If you have that ATC license, you're active. You don't have to take that course if you're a DC as well. But I took it anyways, and I loved it. So just to, <laughs> to do more of what I enjoyed doing, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, this is actually a really good question um, that we just got about somebody working at another university um, in an athletic department there. Would you need to potentially go elsewhere to do that? Or how, how would you recommend going about that, Dr. Ramirez? Yeah, this is a great question. We've had several of this. We've even had people in professional sports. Um, you can work, you just cannot be paid for your time. So for instance, if you are working um, Yes, as a, as a coach with one program, you absolutely can complete your internship with like maybe the athletic training staff or under one of the strength and conditioning coach outside of your hours that you would be paid for for your job, if that makes sense. So you just can't overlap your workload, but we absolutely, um, I actually did my master's internship at the University of Missouri while working here at the University of Missouri. So I just worked under their baseball athletic trainer um, outside of my normal hours and completed my internship component there. So absolutely doable and wonderful question. We also have had um, professional athletes, any individuals in professional athletic setting or people that have maybe a, a non-compete um, condition so they doesn't really allow them to go outside of their business. Um, and we found ways to work around with other people in the department um, as well. So we've had athletic trainers that work for a PT clinic and do outreach at a high school. And because they already knew the individuals were able to get their internship hours in the morning under physical therapy at the clinic before they started their job in the afternoon in the athletic setting at a high school. Perfect. Well, while we have a small break in questions here, I'm going to go ahead and just give a little more information on the admissions side. Um, as you guys come up with more questions, please feel free to type those in the chat um, or, you know, when I'm finished talking, unmute your mic and we can we can answer those as well. So um, and please ask more questions, because otherwise I'm just going to ramble on about paperwork and boring stuff. So. Um, so really briefly, like I said in the chat earlier, um, if you guys are interested in applying for this program, I know we do have some current applicants in here already, um, but for those of you who have not and are still interested in moving forward, um, feel free to use the referral code ARR on our application on the website. Um, that'll waive the $50 application fee for you and just kind of help expedite that process a little bit more. Um, we are still accepting applications for the January trimester. Um, our deadline is in just a couple of weeks. I believe it's the 18th uh, is, is the deadline for um, admission into the January term. So still a couple of weeks to get everything all squared away for you. Um, 
And if you're unable to make January work, um, we also have start dates in May and September. So we have three start dates every year, um, September, January, May, whichever one of those works best for you. Um, your experience in the program really shouldn't be too different no matter when you're starting the, the program. We don't have specific cohorts or anything. So you could be taking, you know, potentially a course with, you know, your first trimester with somebody who's been in the program for a year already. So um, really, really doesn't matter when you're going to be starting that program. Um, and then in terms of tuition, I know that's everybody's favorite topic is how much money is this going to cost? So um, tuition is $450 per credit hour, and this is typically about a 39 credit hour program. Depending on which electives you choose, that number can vary a little bit. Um, so total tuition for the master's program is $17,550. Um, and we also obviously have a financial aid department who can walk you through some options on that front. So if you guys do have questions specifically for that group, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to forward your information to them to ask more specific questions on that front. Um, in terms of what we'll need to move forward on the admissions side, um, it's a very simple process for us. We try not to have too many hoops for you guys to jump through. Um, it's really just your application, um, which again, you can waive that application fee and get that on file pretty quickly. And then we require your official transcripts from undergrad uh, to be on file as well. Um, for any of our chiropractic students that are in here, it's even easier for you guys because um, we already have your transcripts from when you started the DC program. So um, we just have to walk across the hall and grab those. So um, if you're, like I said, interested in getting in last minute for the January term, still a couple of weeks to get that taken care of. Um, and if anybody has any other questions or anything, we are more than happy to answer those now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put my email address in um, the chat down here. So that in case anybody does have any questions or anything after this is over, please feel free to email me. Um, I was also the one that bothered you guys the last few days with emails. So um, feel free to respond to one of those if you do have any additional questions or anything as well. So. Um, looks like we do have a couple more questions yeah. that just came through here. So. And I think we have one too, a little further up that we, I think we we accidentally skipped over. Um, that was asked about the emergency class. Is it during a specific trimester? It is actually offered every trimester. Now there is one course that is a prerequisite to taking that. So you couldn't take it the first trimester, um, but you could after you finish your other prerequisite core course for that. So we start you off with the core um, courses and then start adding in those electives and that is considered one of the electives. So you still can take it pretty early on. You don't have to take it right at the end either. So that is a great question. And yes, anyone can take that course. And to answer Sean's question about prereqs here, um, so prerequisite coursework, we can go back pretty much as far as we need to. Um, we have students who have you know, return to school after, you know, being out for 20 years or so, and we can go back and honor prerequisites pretty much as far back as we can. Um, in terms of having a master's degree and wanting potential transfer credit for the program, that needs to be completed within the last 10 years. So um, just kind of keep that in mind um, when you're, um, when you're looking to apply. Um, you know, like, like you said in your question here, if you're going to be starting a little bit later, that's completely fine. Um, I would just obviously recommend you try to do it within that 10 year window if possible, so that, you know, if your courses would transfer, we can potentially give you a little bit of transfer credit there and save you some time and money. That's obviously a, a good thing if we can do that. So, right. and um, along um, too with the, the DC program, there are two courses that we allow the transfer credit from the DC program so that you don't have to take as well. So that saves you a little bit of money for two courses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's a really good point. The the DC students, I, I'm I'm not Dr. Ramirez. Do you know off the top of your head which courses those are? I think it's principles and, of PT and and biomechanics. Biomechanics. Yes, biomechanics and principles of physical therapy. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, and then Patrick, your question about financial aid, um, I would probably recommend you reach out to them directly. You shouldn't need to get a new FAFSA on file, um, but they can walk you through your, your current eligibility and, and kind of discuss some different options for you um, to, to help cover the program. Um, so I would just recommend you reach out to either send them an email or if, if you're you know on campus at some point um, in the near future, feel free to stop by their office and talk to them about that. So. Um, Let's see, question about, okay, so um, kind of reverse transfer credit, the master's to the DC program. Um, I am not as familiar with this. We don't see a lot of students get their master's and then go through the DC program. Um, Dr. Ramirez, I don't know if you maybe have a little more more information or maybe that's something we might need to look into and get back to you. I have not experienced that yet. Um, however, I'm going to put my email in the chat. So feel free to email me that and I will figure that out and email you back right away um, as soon as I find out that information of whether or not that would be acceptable. 
Thank you very much. Of course. All right. Um, do we have any other questions, concerns, anything else that either Dr. Ramirez or I can help you guys out with tonight? Okay. Another, yeah. Another good question about the internship. Yeah. Um, so, is it, would it be would it be possible to split that up into multiple trimesters? I know um, that's something we try to get done in one trimester. Would it be possible to split that up if it's not possible? Correct. Yeah, we do that in one trimester. It's 180 hours. Um, so, with our again, it ends up being like 11 and a half hours per week, or a little over 10 hours a week. Um, depending on how you you break it up or if you start week one of, of the trimester um, over that 15 weeks. So you have one trimester. Now, have there been exceptions made in the past of somebody maybe during a pregnancy or something of the sort? Absolutely. So it's a case-by-case -case basis on that. But um, yes, as far as we do want you to complete that in one trimester. And that's your last thing. So then you get to graduate. So that's exciting. <laughs> then you don't have to pay for another trimester and you don't have to prolong your graduation so you can get that completed. Um, and a great question that I had from a student was if the school was closed, maybe if we have spring break, would your hours count during that time? Absolutely. So if you take spring break and you complete, you know, maybe you have that week off of, of school and you really want to hit your um, internship hours hard that week and, and do more to that way you don't have to do as many at the end of the of the trimester absolutely that is acceptable as well so that was a great question that i had yesterday perfect okay. and again we're always meeting to look for new opportunities um again i talked about how wonderful our faculty was in a meeting we had yesterday that was part of what we discussed was well, what are the new internship sites that we can establish for students because our demographics are changing as students are changing um, in their careers and what their interests are so again we've we're working with maybe more crossfit gyms and specialists that work in that setting um, not just in the sports medicine collegiate setting i know that's flashy and fun to talk about but that's not for everyone and it's not everyone's interest so we want to make sure that we are working individually with you again i do oversee that course so i've already met with a handful of students that maybe were having trouble finding internships or have I've used certain connections that I've had to find something that fits what they want to do not just any internship to get the hours but what they really what their passion is it's the first thing I ask them when I meet with them what is their passion um, so yeah I hope that helps to clarify a little bit of the internship component yeah absolutely right um, so, so I, yeah, I can go ahead and, and answer this. Sean, part of that does depend on if um, what background you have. Uh, and, and again, you do learn some of these things of working with injuries and rehabilitation. Are you an athletic trainer? No. Are you, a, um, are you a, an orthopedic physician? No. <laughs> so you're not going to learn things in the same way that they are. Um, what I will do is I'm going to put in the chat here this is our our course description so you can see all the courses that you would be taking if you follow this link and a little bit more information of what falls under um, your expertise after that obviously you may have a leg up after graduation um, for instance i had an athletic training background this just expanded my knowledge and made me even more um, aware and, and educated on how to help with recovery of certain injuries um, and, and you will have a better idea of how to stagger some of those exercise progressions. Uh, it's geared a little bit more towards that as opposed to um, like an ACL evaluation or a knee injury evaluation. But the chiropractic students have a little bit of a leg up on that because they do go through some of that orthopedic training in the chiropractic program and their doctorate, and then they can apply that. Um, so it does, again, if you're going through the DC program or you have another background in, in a sports medicine setting or physical therapy, absolutely. Really good question from, um, from Sonia here about shadowing, um, you know, while in the program or before getting to the internship. Um, do you have any recommendations on, you know, put, you know, some potential people that, that students could shadow, whether it's in the chiropractic field or, um, or you know, if you're not interested in going that route, or, are there any recommendations you would have for that? Absolutely. Um, a lot of individuals, so what you're having the most trouble with right now with COVID is hospital settings. Um, they're very becoming a little bit still strict because we have, you know, most of the time it's just trying to uh, 
keep the PPE that they have available for their nurses and the physicians who are going in um, in the emergency room. So it's been a little bit harder this past trimester, but I think that's gonna start easing up um, as, the, as next year starts and progresses. Um, physical therapy clinics are wonderful. I have a, a very dear friend that oversees, um, he works with a company that has over a thousand PT clinics in the US. So I'm happy to connect you with any of those individuals. Um, that are in your community to try to get you some experience to shadow exercise physiologists. Um, those are great. Athletic settings in the collegiate side are, are also being a little strict depending on their um, their conferences and what they have. Um, but again, the Division Two, II, Division Three, now they're doing all of their sports in the spring because they stopped their fall setting. So you've got a lot of opportunities in the athletics setting, in the athletics world at some of the smaller institutions um, because they're going to have a lot of work going on where usually they only have one team in season. Now they're going to have two or three that, that their athletic trainers or their strength and conditioning coaches are overseeing right now. And Wendy, to answer your question, um, at this point, we actually do not have any caps on our class sizes. So as long as students meet the admissions criteria for the program, we are willing to accept you into the degree. Um, I don't believe there are any plans to change that at any point in the, in the near future that I'm aware of. Um, so that's that's another really good thing about, about Logan is that, you know, in case January doesn't work out for you, um, you know that as long as you meet the requirements, you're, you're going to be able to get started in a later trimester. Um, you know, even if you're maybe accepted for the January term, we can always push your acceptance back to the following term, that sort of thing. So, um, and then Dr. Ramirez, I don't know if you want to talk more about the differences between the CCSP and the boards and that sort of stuff. So. Absolutely. So the CCSP goes through um, another <clears throat> entity, not through Logan, um, or even who you go through your MBCE for your chiropractic. So it is a board's um, it is an exam that you take. Um, I took mine in Kansas City. They were offering it on campus um, at Cleveland when I was there. So I went to their campus and took it. They usually offer it twice a year, um, once at their annual convention, and then another, they'll have different it changes each year there where they offer and you can pick one of their eight, nine, 10 um, locations that they have. You apply completely online on their website. Um, and I can provide that link for you in just a moment. It's also on Logan's website under the certifications that you can get from the master's program. And so you do sit for that test. Um, mine was just in, it was kind of like being in the purser center at, at Logan. So we all sat in a room and it was timed and, and we had someone walking around um, and it was uh, on paper and Scantrons, and it was pretty, um, pretty easy going. If you've gone through the DC program, you're used to it you're, with your boards. I think my boards was more intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> and Corbin, your question about the, uh, the schedule for the program, there are 24 core hours that everybody in the program will take. So um, the, the first part of the program is pretty much laid out. Uh, most people just kind of go through you know, from top to bottom of that core class, because you're going to have to take all of them. Um, and again, your success coach will work with you on um, on scheduling that out to fit into, you know, how many courses you want to take each term and that sort of stuff. And then you do have the option for those electives that Dr. Ramirez discussed earlier um, once the core curriculum is complete. So we do typically recommend that you complete the core curriculum first, though. Yeah. Is that great uh, if I show the academic degree plan that we have? If yeah, I absolutely. I think that's, so, yeah, yeah, I think that would be this, awesome is um, a link to that and I don't mind sharing my screen as well to show you a little bit about what how we go about this um, so with your courses are you able to see that I'm sorry yes yeah we can yeah, see that. perfect um, you have so these are your core classes that you have to complete and again we do waive the biomechanics and the principles of physical therapy if you're in the DC program and then you have your elective so you have to complete 23 of the credit hours for the core courses and then you can choose out of these electives nine of them to complete and then everyone must complete the internship component. So you get this is where you get a lot of your choices of which one of these that you want to take. And you can do more than nine credit hours. I think I ended up with 11 because mine kind of fell wonky in the way that I chose to take my classes. So and, and uh, while you have that pulled up, we had another yeah. question about the, um, the DC anatomy courses transferring to the master's. Can you explain the difference between those and why they would not be transferring over? 
Yeah, so you're going to look at the anatomy um, and the prosection and, and the motion in just a little bit of a different way, right? So um, there's not a cadaver lab component <laughs> like the DC program. So I'm sorry, you're going to miss out on that fun that you've already gone through. But this is going to look at it um, really from a great applied way too. Um, there's a lot of interactive components of that to see more of the global movement. And again, focusing a little bit more on some of the extremity stuff as well and you're just taking a different approach to it um, but still yes some of the information is still very similar and you're going through some of the things that that you've done I laughed when I went through it I told someone I was taking anatomy for the sixth time in my life right so it made it a little bit easier to get through that course but you are just looking at it in a little bit of a different perspective and then I know we just had the um the courses listed up there, but Evan had another question about okay, um, kind of the um, kind of the combo of um, you know rehab versus sports science. What what you know would you say there's a certain percentage of each of those covered? Or is it pretty well rounded? Um, just would you mind giving a little more insight on? On sure, that. absolutely. I'm gonna give me one second. I'm pulling the chat back up to make sure I answer this correctly on my screen sure. here. Um, Okay, the rehab side of the program, how much of the program is geared towards rehabbing versus injury versus sports science. Okay, so it depends on the courses that you take, right? So um, exercise prescription is going to go, and testing and prescription is gonna go more into that strength and conditioning side of things. So that can be progressing individuals from, that are coming out of an injury or perfectly healthy individuals, right, who want to just improve their athletic performance. Um, maybe working with, uh, again, that's that personal trainer, um, the strength and conditioning coaches, your athletic performance side, and then you have the, the rehabilitation. So your upper and lower extremity rehabilitation. This is going to be, these are going to be the classes that are going to help you with that injury rehabilitation. That's going to be focused more towards there. And our faculty member is an athletic trainer um, that teaches those courses and she does a wonderful job, um, very, you know, highly qualified to teach this and, and help you go through. So there is, part of that depends more on which of your electives that you take um, that are geared. But again, it's all well-rounded. Right, because um, in your core courses, you're going to get a little bit more information, like the exercise and cardiorespiratory physiology. I loved that course, right? That told you a lot about someone's performance from um, more of the, the chemical reactions in the body and in the lungs and their VO2 max. All of those things were extremely fascinating to me to see how the body works from that sense, as opposed to just a muscle movement and um, orthopedic side. And, and then again, we do research because that's always extremely important. You have a research course that you'll do. And then the principles of physical therapy, that's going to teach you a little bit more of the rehab side. So you get a good balance of both of those. You just can cater more to one if that's where your interests go in your electives than the other. And I hope that it answers that correctly. If not, please feel free to you can unmute and we can chat about it a little bit more or I can answer a follow up question. And then there was another one here. The uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you just saw I that. see that. Great <laughs> question. Um, we we do take those together. So you take the sports emergency care lab and you take the course to sit for the CCSP. Um, the lab you're learning that's a it's a shorter weekend, right? So you're not going to this lab every week doing the hands-on component. So you have to have um, a certain background information and that you're learning from the emergency care course itself online that you can then apply and prepare you for that lab weekend. So yes, you will take those concurrently. Um, you don't have to take them together um, at the same time or even have to take both of those at all if you don't want to sit for the CCSP or you have other interest. But if you want to sit for the CCSP, yes, you will take both of those. And you are so very welcome, Evan. <laughs> All right. I think we are coming up on kind of winding things down here. Um, does anybody have any last minute questions or anything before we kind of sign off? And I'm sure um, I'm sure that I'll be bugging you guys again in the in the next few days here. Um, but like we said earlier, this is um, we are recording this. So I will send that link um, over to you guys once we kind of get that edited and hopefully shortened up just a bit. So in case you um, would like to refer back to that at any point um, for a little bit more information, you'll have that for your record. So I will be sending that out again in the next couple of days. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the referral code again in here in the, um, the chat for you guys. Um, 
just so you remember that. Um, if you are planning to apply in the next few days, and that'll, again, as a reminder, waive your application fee for you. So um, before we sign off, I, again, just want to say we really appreciate everybody who was able to jump on. Um, this This is a great turnout, um, and I'm sure we'll be doing more of these again in the future, um, probably focused on, you know, maybe specific parts of the program or um, talking more about internships. Maybe we'll have some guest speakers, that sort of stuff. So um, Dr. Ramirez, do you have any closing remarks before we yeah, I just want to thank, say thank you again for, for joining. I, this has been wonderful. I love talking about this program. Um, I did put my email in the, the chat for those who are watching the recorded and maybe not see that. This is brittany.ramirez at logan.edu. Um, please feel free to email me. I'm happy to meet one-on-one um, -on -one and have any discussions about the, the courses, about the program, if you have anything else you'd like to follow up on. Um, but I just appreciate you all taking time out of your evening to be with us.